Aloha, and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I am your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, and we're coming to you today from Cocoa Beach, Florida. You know we are half the time in Hawaii, half the time in Florida, and uh, we do every morning at uh, 7 a.m. Bear Wozniak time, so whatever ocean I happen to be on, we even did it from Israel uh, earlier this year on the, at the ocean in Tel Aviv. We do the Ocean Sunrise Catechism, so you got to kind of follow, figure out where I am, but at 7 a.m., wherever I happen to be, we do 15 minutes, and we've been working our way through the catechism. Uh, we've been doing this for almost two years now, and we're about two-thirds of the way through the catechism, and we just kind of take the catechism translated into bear speak, and we uh, makes it a little bit more uh, easy to maybe understand or apply, and uh, we're going to start our most exciting area, and we're going to be talking about sin. That's the next thing we talk about on the Ocean Sunrise Catechism. So you may want to tune out for a couple of weeks and not watch it. But no, we do the Ocean Sunrise Catechism with the ocean rising behind us. Uh, and that's the, I mean, not the ocean, the sun rising over the ocean behind us. And so that's the only reason I try to live by the ocean is just for your sake so you can watch the sunrise. But uh, no, we're have, having a great time here. This last weekend we went up to Tom Equals Ranch. He's the best friend of Archbishop Wenske. And we filmed the opening of season two of Long Ride Home. We've already shot the whole, sh the whole show, but we're at, through the magic of television, we reshot the opening. You're going to love the opening sequence. We've, he's got thoroughbred horses there. You know, they're made to run on the racetrack. And uh, we show with our drone these horses running through the field, and we show their feet running, a close-up of their feet. And then we show motorcycles being ridden, and then the horses and the motorcycles. And you see us cinching up the horses and cinching up the saddlebags on the motorcycles. And you hear the horses whinnying, and then you hear the hoofs pounding, and you hear the motorcycle engine revving. And, you know, it's our, our basically what we're saying is that a horse loves to, be, to run, and a motorcycle needs to be ridden. And so, hence, let's take another run down to Key West with the Archbishop, turn around and roll thunder up to New Jersey, and then come down to Blue Ridge Parkway. So, uh, yeah, so Long Ride Home Season 2 is in post-production now, and we're excited to see it probably be released on EWTN in January, but we, we, we 2019. But what we really are excited about is we are the first show in EWTN history uh, to be distributed on iTunes and Prime Video. That should be happening by the time you're hearing this show, and we really need for you to push push that and make that happen. Uh, we really appreciate uh, ma make those the help th that uh, production on those those sites uh, kind of blow up big, and we really need your help to go to our YouTube channel Bear Wozniak because. YouTube tells us if we can get about 600 more members, they're going to really start blowing up our Ocean Sunrise Catechism and promoting it. So if you would go there and not only just watch the, the Morning Sunrise Catechism, but follow it, I mean subscribe to it, that will help us too. And you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our newsletter. By the time you're listening to the show, I think about around 5 o'clock tonight, when we're recording the show, we're turning on our brand new website. And so it is cool. We had Matt Meeks formerly with... Uh, uh, I guess it is uh, Warner Brothers uh, do all this work for us with Matt Smith, Colleen Monroe, and uh, and uh, Ryan Thomas. So we just really uh, appreciate all your financial support, and we want to invite you guys to come join Bears Man Cave. It's for men only, and you can only join it by going to our website, and uh, then we give you access to a private secret Facebook group called Bears Man Cave. And we post a lot and share a lot with each other there and to challenge, equip, and mobilize, and about every two or three weeks, we do a live video chat where we we uh, two way video room where we can all talk to each other. So it's pretty cool stuff. But okay, I said all that just to get this. You know that the Bear Wozniak Adventure is a is a show that that focuses on adventure. And you know some of my escapades, you know, long distance paddling and skydiving and piloting a plane. But the, one of the gnarliest things I ever did was running with the bulls in Pamplona. I did it twice, which shows you how stupid I am. But I never met a man that ran with the cows. And so we have as our guest today a man, uh, uh, a unique among men, Dennis Daniels uh, from Central Texas. He's the head of head ministries for the Diocese of, uh, of, of, Do of Austin. But he's famous pretty much around the state of Texas for his escapade running with the cows. So, uh, Dennis, aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, Bear. How you doing, man? That was, that was rough, you know? <laughs> 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 well, it's true though, right? Isn't there? Isn't there? Uh, I understand. There's this this incredible yeah, adventure yeah, yeah, running yeah. with the cows. What was that you, you you were telling us about? You did with your uh, son. Uh, okay, so so we had a calf out on the ranch that wasn't nursing. I'm not a cowboy, all right. I I it was a weekender, a weekend place. 
But anyway, so I see this calf. It's not nursing properly from its mom. So I just thought I'm going to get the calf, throw it in the bed of the truck, get it into working pens and bottle feed it, get it started. I didn't want it to die. So my son and I, we go out to the to the, to the the pasture. I, I throw a rope around the calf, jump in the bed. Wait a minute, wait, hold on, hold on again. You lassoed a calf. Yeah. And and did you do the how? So you, did you do the thing like you see on TV where the loop? Bro, loop? Uh -huh, yeah. And you did you yeah. do it around its 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 head or its its throat? Yeah, I just did its it legs? His head. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you did what every young boy in the world has been practicing using a sawhorse to throw a rope on or a chair. You actually lassoed this monstrous calf. So should we call yeah. this running with the calves instead of running with the cows or? Yeah, well, no, I was I was actually riding with the cow and, or with the calf, and the cow was running alongside the truck. Okay? okay, so so you so you lassoed this calf, and then I interrupted this flow. So, so but this exciting life defined uh, death defined event. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so lassoed the calf. We're running the we're driving across the pasture trying to get back to the working pens. Well, my I the intent was to get away from the cow. My son is driving just slow enough so that the cow can run alongside and try to get in the bed of the truck with the calf. She was not a happy camper. And uh, so if we finally got the thing inside the working pens, I start feeding the calf. My son is trying to distract the cow. The cow hits my son in the chest, throws him about 15 yards. We learned that you don't want to mess around with a 1100 pound mama cow and her baby. You know, they just, they're just not, they're, they're not, they're not cool with that. You know, so you only learn that lesson once, right? You yeah, you that that. it doesn't take you long to learn that lesson. See, you the thing that? is, that, it was me, like running with the bulls, I did it once because we used to always just surf a contest in Bay Ritz, France, right over the Pyrenees for Pamplona. So I went down there and did that once, but doing it a second time, see, I never, I didn't learn my lesson the first time. It's just plain stupid, you know. To, yeah, there, you know, there's there's something about, you know, a 1,800-pound a bull that just says, you know, sometimes you just let those big boys yeah, go. Yeah, but, you know, Dennis, you know, you are a friend of my sister. Right, it just so happens. Yeah. My wonderful, wise, and beautiful sister Tammy Wozniak Renke. And yes. uh and and so you guys go you guys go way back. But there's something real disconcerting that I discovered about you. I don't even know if we should talk about it on the air. Um we discovered something researching your, your sordid past that you we saw a picture of you wearing an Aggie, a Texas Aggie uh sweater. Or uh, or yeah, yeah, it was actually a long sleeve shirt. Two of my kids and a lot of my money went to Texas A&M. And why, so why would you let that happen? I thought you were a good father. Uh, you know, you realize that Texas A&M has more Catholic students than any other university in the country. What? Yeah, over 14,000 Catholic students. How many? Over 14,000 Catholic students. Wow, so you guys are invading Texas A&M. Maybe you guys will redeem it. You know, I'll tell you what, you know, the, the, the last, there's been two bishops appointed out of Texas A&M, the, the university center, uh, Bishop Michael Ziss and Bishop David Conderla. So, uh, yeah, the, the, there's, there's, there's priests all, all coming out of Texas A&M. It's a great place. for. But, but see, here's the thing. I went to Baylor and you were raised in Waco. I spent my senior year in high school in Waco, Texas, hence going to Baylor. And Baylor Green and Gold and Texas A&M like arch, were arch enemies back when I went to school there. And uh, so this is just very, um, very disconcerting. To, you know, if you saw Long Ride Home Season 1, you saw us uh, do a biker rally in Houston, Texas. And there's this cool guy shows up there, and he and his son are wearing Texas Aggie hats. And uh, that was a problem. Well, let me ask you this question. Uh, I was on the elevator uh, at, at a conference, uh, EWTN Radio conference a few years ago and there's a guy wearing a texas aggie hat which really became an issue because now we're getting on an elevator together which you yeah. don't know what's going to happen between the first and the second floor could be mayhem but as the door's about to close we push the button for a second and a guy gets on the elevator wearing a university of texas hat okay to you okay all right we're good suddenly suddenly the aggie and the bear are like allies against the University of Texas guy. So, yeah. You know, so there's that bit. I know, but there's this big I, I remember when the Aggies came up and painted uh, Judge Baylor's uh, neck red. Yeah. Or maroon, I guess you call it, right? Yeah, he painted it maroon. Yeah. Well, you probably remember whenever they actually had live bears down on the down. Oh, well, they the still camp. do. They still do. They still yeah. do. And, you know, yeah, um, 
find the bear den. They've been doing uh, uh, Baylor doesn't look anything like what it did whenever you were there. I mean, yeah, it's, back it's, in the olden days. No, but I was there recently for a football game. But Dennis uh, is trying his best to wear Baylor green and gold. It's a really drab, grayish, faded out green and gold color. So I don't know what you call those, but it's an Aloha shirt. So you're it doing your best to kind of make up for your big mistake with the. So there's another thing about you that I heard, and that is that you like to play with fire. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, whenever you've got a ranch, you've got a lot of a uh, lot of deadfall. And I used to donate a lot of firewood to the to the Knights of Columbus Council that I was a member of. And uh, uh, you have to be careful on a in a pasture with with. Yeah, you know, with burn piles, you just well, listen. Li listen, let's just do this, you guys. This is an exciting thing. It's known on radio as a cliffhanger. We're gonna find out about how and what Dennis did playing with fire on his ranch in uh, somewhere outside of Austin or Waco, Texas. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure, you guys. I, I know you're not gonna be able to wait, but you gotta wait a few minutes. We'll come back and you'll be able to hear about Dennis's other uh, exciting uh, uh, escapades. Uh, playing with fire. This is Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your host, Bear Wozniak. You know, for those of you who, uh, who are listening on the EWTN network, I think we have several million listeners each week on our Saturday show. Uh, you can also listen on Sirius XM. You can listen on all kinds of apps, shortwave radio over there in Russia and other places around the world, Belarus and place like, places like that. Uh, you can uh, listen to it on any just about any podcast format. We mo mostly focus on iTunes and Blog Talk Radio podcast apps. But the coolest thing is in the last several months, we're starting to show, uh, show up on YouTube. And so you can actually watch this show and see Dennis in his very – Mm, his his uh, his effort to wear uh, a green and gold Aloha shirt for this radio interview. So you can see us, and if you were seeing us, you'd see me right now holding up my most recent book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. It's a cool book. People love these books. This is a, it, it, it talks about the seven virtues, which is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite subjects. But it uses uh, a lot of narrative, telling stories of me and my friends or Always one of the uh, another example of, of maybe a, a saint, and then all through that there's a storyline about every fourth chapter of an open ocean rescue that I did, and it's just kind of interesting because it kind of ties the whole the whole book together. So in other words, it's not boring. It keeps you it gets a, a page turning turning. It's something you can a fifth grader t can read, but uh, but people uh, people of all ages really love it. So go to our website deepadventure.com if you want an autographed copy of that or any of my books. So we're talking with a man who likes to play with fire. Um, th we're, this is our second segment, and we still haven't got through the counseling portion of where we're trying to uh, – a, a lot of guests I introduce with him, I almost kind of have to explain more than introduce. Dennis, what is this about you playing with fire out on your, on your ranch? Yeah, having to get rid of brush piles. and uh, I don't think you had to. I think you just wanted to play with fire. Well, the, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit, you know, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, I did have two or three situations where, you know, the pasture caught fire and you had to get the tractor, had to go get a, uh, an ax and a chainsaw in order to keep the pasture from burning up. And it, it was really embarrassing at the time. No one would have ever known about it except for my wife and I and my son until you had to ask the question. So I really appreciate the whole you. world knows now. Opening. Opening that door there, Bear. Yeah. I was out with a friend of mine. Maybe you knew him, Timothy McCormick, uh, in Texas when I lived out there. And we went to his dad's ranch, and I think we started a major fire, too. So oh, yeah. you're not alone. It's, so the lesson is. It's easy to do. My next-door neighbor set a fire in his backyard <laughs> about a month ago. Well, and, that's what, and that's what you're doing, now, honestly, Dennis, with your work now uh, with men. We want to dig into that a little bit. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you, uh, so you for a while were a roaming Catholic, right? You. You were raised in the church. Tell us about your 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 uh, your journey with with the Lord a little bit. You know, I I was raised in the in the faith. Uh, went to Catholic uh, high school. Uh, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, our families went to the same church. I was I was a member of St. Louis Catholic Church in in Waco, and um, uh, whenever I married, uh, you know, my wife was of a different faith. 
Uh, but that, that didn't, you know, we loved each other. We got married. Uh, we got our, our marriage was blessed. Uh, as we traveled around the country, though, uh, we started experimenting with uh, with other denominations and other churches and so forth. And uh, I became a CEO Catholic, uh, you know, a Christmas and Easter only sort of a thing uh, for a number of years. Um, I, I never really considered leaving the faith. I just wasn't actively practicing my faith. Um, and then whenever we moved back to Texas, uh, I started, uh, I started, you know, going to mass again. I started, uh, I was talking with a friend of mine at work. He gave me some books to read. What, I what, really what, what, book, what, what books, what kind of, what was oh, it that man. kind of pulled you back in? Uh, you know, the first thing that he did is he started really slow. It was just conversations, you know. Uh, then he gave me Scott Hahn's conversion CD. Uh, Scott Hahn had a six CD set uh, that was uh, uh, all about the faith. It was, you know, the papacy and the Eucharist and Mary and the saints and so forth. Uh, then he gave me uh, Carl Keating's book, uh, Catholicism uh, versus, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Fundamentalism. I read that, and, and then for about three years at the time, I was doing a lot of business travel. And uh, there was a, a Catholic parish uh, around my destination in San Jose. They had a bookstore. And for about three years, I, just anything I could lay my hands on, I read. Okay? I read the catechism. I read a number of commentaries. Well, let's talk about that, the, the catechism. Um, so you, you were starting back uh, through the church through looking for uh, in a pursuit of truth. Yeah. What was your experience when you opened the catechism? You know, I'll tell you, the catechism was an interesting read. Um, you know, it's it's more of a reference book. I mean, it's it's a hard read. It's not something that you, that you sit there and, and you pour through. But you learn so many things about the faith whenever you read the catechism. You know, the things that, that you know, whenever you go through, you know, CCE as a kid or, or whatever, it, 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 it doesn't resonate with you. But then as an adult going back in and reading all this stuff, it says, oh, my gosh, yeah, I do remember that, or I remember this, or that's new. So, And, and then every page, you know, that there's something different. Uh, it's you know, almost that, like yeah. e every word is yeah. so profoundly chosen. And, you know, the, the catechism tells you uh, to read it also as Lectio Divina. And I find uh, reading through it, taking copious notes, is, everyone should just do a read through. But I think the catechism should be part of everybody's daily reading in their in their prayer life. It's just re but you shouldn't read more than a page or even a half a page. Yeah. And yeah. let it well, sink and, in. And and the fact and with everything being footnoted, you know, because yeah. one of the things that people don't recognize is is you know, of course as Catholics we know that the that the faith and, and the Bible go hand in hand. But being able to see where your faith is in the catechism and then where it roots from you know, in the in the in in the Bible is just incredible, and most people oh, don't recognize that that's so there. Good. By and reading the footnoted catechism, you see that. Yeah, and you've yeah. got the you've got you know Augustine being quoted or Aquinas being quoted, and and scriptures after scripture after scripture after scripture being quoted, and and every every word is yeah. so precisely and profoundly chosen. Uh, it's the richest read, and I think if you're going to read the Bible, you should have the catechism. You know, right yeah. there with it. So that, so that now you're reading through the catechism, and you're going, you're starting to go to mass uh, regularly, and and then then what? Yeah. So so I was reading through the catechism. I was going to 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 mass regularly, and and at the time, you know, my wife and and family, they were still attending uh, a Methodist church here in in Texas, and so what I was doing this whole time is I'm going to mass in the morning, and then I'm going to Sunday school with my wife. And then, uh, uh, and then the Methodist Church served with 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 my kids, and this went on for years. And um, you know, and and it was it was an interesting experience. It was very stressful on my family, you know, at the time. Um, How is that? How is that that uh, is stressful? You know, uh, it was it was one of those things where. Um, you know, I, I guess that the deepest passion that, that my wife had ever had was that we would all be together in our faith, okay? And we had, we had, I had tried to do that for a number of years, and um, uh, that with me, she could see me pulling away from where the rest of the family was. 
And that was that was stressful for us. It was stressful for all of us. And of course, I'm very alive in my faith and I'm and I'm reading all this stuff and I'm learning this stuff and I'm trying to to, to share it. And it, it, it wasn't a good situation for a long time. And um, uh, I had to learn to just back away. And and um, so so it was We have many men right now, honestly, in our man cave even where they're in that situation where they have yeah. returned to the faith and they're pursuing the faith, but their family, they, they kind of led them in a different direction. And, and now, they're, right. now they're still there. In my own life, Dennis, um, I guess, I, I, it wasn't that I wanted less of the Lord. I wanted to go deeper with God, but I'd been under catechized. There was no one there to really point the direction to me for where to go deeper in my Catholic faith. And I just wanted to go deeper. I started reading evangelical books. I started going to non-denominational churches, leading youth groups and and things like that, and I led my family right out, right out of the Catholic Church. And then part of what happened is I began to believe the false teachings uh, uh, people say about the Catholic Church. You know, the horrible things, uh, uh, misunderstandings, and horrible things that people say about the Catholic Church that are just nowhere true. You know, for you know, if, if um, I think it was Fulton Sheen said, if I believed what what most of the people say about the Catholic Church, if that was what I really, if that's really what the Catholic Church taught, I wouldn't be a Catholic either. But I came back uh, through finding the early church fathers. My dad had become a deacon in the Catholic Church, and uh, and but my children were uh, were raised uh, non-Catholic, and now they're more open to the Catholic faith. Um, one of my sons, I think, actually uh, is very accepting of it. But but the others, uh, my sons especially, are very strong Christians. But as of yet, um, there isn't an appreciation fully of the Catholic Church. So. Our role is just to be servant leaders and to be patient and to, and to be uh, good, first of all, good fathers, good Christians, good men, and maybe in time our, our children will follow. But for those of you men who are facing the same struggle that Dennis had, uh, you know, we, we, we need to be patient. So uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I've been, I'm interviewing Dennis Daniel. We're about to get into a really cool area, uh, uh, talk about his, his book about dads and his ministry among men. So... This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Uh, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, if you want to learn more about, our, about our, uh, our ministry and subscribe to our newsletter. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, you know what we love to have on our show is real men, gritty men, doing the hard thing, uh, doing the tough thing, doing the thing that a lot of other people may not do. And we ha have as our guest today, Dennis Daniel. He is, uh, he is actually responsible for um, men's ministries in the Diocese of Austin, Texas. And he also happens to be a longtime friend of my sister Tammy, which is so cool. They kind of bumped into each other again about a year ago at a reunion. And so somehow through, I don't even know how we connected, Dennis, but somehow either Tammy brought it up or I saw you on Facebook as being a friend of Tammy. And somehow I saw your what you were involved in. I go, i got to have that guy on my show. So you were just recently at a really cool event. I didn't get to make it, uh, but uh, a gathering of about 80 or 90 uh, leaders of men. Uh, what was that event like? You know, it was awesome. Uh, we had about 80 guys there from all over the country, and uh, there's a recognition that there is a, an awakening of, of Catholic men's spirituality across the country. So these are leaders of, of men's ministries from right. around the country. This was a this was a conference of leaders uh, to to try to 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 learn how to share best practices. I mean, if you think about it, every parish is recreating the wheel. Okay, and right. there's a of content that's out there and the, there's a lot of programs that are out there and there's there's conferences that are being put on in every diocese and so forth and the thought process is rather than everybody try to recreate the wheel let's share best known methods so so this conference was about getting uh, uh, leaders from all over the country there and 
We've actually scheduled there's going to be another conference in Dallas. Uh, hey, do you know the event, the date of that event? Because I'm going to be there next year. You know, I don't have the date of the event right now, Bear, but I'll make sure that you that you get yeah. it. And, you know, I know a lot of the guys that you that you've interviewed yeah, were at, at the at the conference. Right. You know, I mean, yeah, we're, we're like a yeah. we're like a tribe, right? I mean, when you're involved in the new evangelization and you're involved with men's ministry, there's kind of like a tribe. It's yeah, a tight, it's a yeah. tight group of people. But we want to expand that next year. I'm gonna. I basically I want to be the I want to be the uh, la- the uh, mega megaphone or the loudspeaker for anyone that's involved in that. Um, I had uh, contact with the uh, uh, with who's the guy that started again? The James, uh, wh- wh- his name, uh, the man, new evangelization. Who was that again? I forget. I forget. Uh, you know, there's so many keywords that was came out. Cra- I, don't... I forget his name. Yeah, don't gee, don't. Gee, all don't... of a sudden, everyone I should know because I'm gonna have him as as a guest soon and uh we had jeff cavins i met with him and we talked about what's happening there so uh no we're going to be the biggest proponent of that of that event we'll be there next year we want to just give voice to everyone that was there and and just open up the doors wide open for help to promote their each each of their outreaches and their ministries but you're right you use the kind of a business term the best practices and what i've seen in the men's movement is men that have been successful in, in every other areas of their lives in business especially or the other giftedness, whatever it is, they're just saying, "I've got these gifts, this this skill set. I'm going to bring it to bear on the on evangelizing men." Yeah, yeah, and you know, one of the things that we're doing in our diocese, uh, I've been a business coach for years, and one of the things that we've done is we're lot we've we've actually revisited our vision and our mission and our organization structure. We're calling it, you know, uh, spirituality and business acumen. Uh, I had a very interesting, uh, we call it the divine appointment, uh, a situation that happened about a year ago. Uh, a friend of mine and I, we were, we were talking about our men's ministry. We had decided to meet, we were in a five guys in Temple, Texas. Now I'm from Georgetown and he's from Waco. So we just decided that we were going to be in Temple. We're there, we're having, having lunch. We're talking about the tactics of what we needed to go do next with our, uh, with our, uh, men's ministry. A Catholic priest comes walking in the door, and uh, so we invite Father to come over and 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 sit and have lunch with us. We we just thought he was a diocesan priest, and you know maybe we could get a men's ministry launch at his at his parish. As it turns out, he's a he's a traveling evangelist, and he spent two hours with us talking about evangelization of men. And one of the things that we that he he hit us right between the eyes. He said, "Look, this is an eighty percent spiritual battle and twenty percent tactical." Absolutely. The yeah. tactics are important, but the spirituality is more important. He says, you're fighting against the evil one, and if all that you do is the mechanics, you will lose. You know, I was with, I was with, um, with uh, Monsignor Gino at the Vatican uh, in September uh, a year ago, and he said, I have so many people come in. My, he was, he's in charge of the new evangelization for the whole world, for the English-speaking world, and also yeah. for he did the whole um, uh, the, the, the year of uh, Jubilee. He was in charge of all of that. And... Uh, he said, everybody comes here and talks about programs, but you're actually doing it, and you're doing something that's the hardest thing to do, reaching men that are outside the church. And that only comes uh, through spiritual warfare. But that example of that priest walking in at that moment, that's what's exciting about being a part of the new evangelization. Uh, the new evangelization is, you know who it is? It's Matthew James uh, Christoph that I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, Matt Christoph. Yeah, he was at yeah. the conference. He organized it, I think, basically. Yeah. But anyway, so... Uh, when you're involved in ministry like this, it's so cool because Jason Jones, a buddy of mine, calls it the Holy Spirit Action Plan. You're sitting there, and, and this priest walks in, no coincidence. And when you're involved in, in, in the new evangelization, when you're involved in, in, in outreach like this, that happens every day. It's just, yeah. it, you know, it's so exciting to see the Lord saying, and someone told me the other day, Dennis, they go, wow, um, uh, I, I, you know, I'm really under some, he was talking to me about his ministry, and he goes, but I've been really under some spiritual attack. And I go, I, I won't say it over the radio what I said to him, but I said basically BS. You know, you're you're not under any sort of spiritual attack. You're on the attack, and you're fi- and you're facing some resistance. You're on the attack, and they're beginning to reveal what what they've been doing to you all along. When if you're involved in ministry to men, you are on the point of the spear because the number one attack Satan has today, uh, through the culture of death and all of that, is to attack men. Men. Yeah. And the biggest attack he has on men is that they've just fallen in the background. You know, that, you know uh, they'll have sex with women outside of marriage. They get all they want from a woman. 
with no responsibility. They, they're living together, or as soon as the relationship gets serious, they go on to the next thing. And it's no different with their life within the church. They let, they'll let the women just do the work. And it's not, you know, people go, well, the women have taken over the church. No, you abdicated your servant leadership position. Of course, we love the women being involved in the ministry to the fullest extent that they possibly can, can be with their gifts and whatever God has given them. But where are the men teaching catechism? Where are the men leading youth groups? The reason right. why there's no men is that I remember Rick Santorum when he spoke to us at the Napa Institute last year, and he went over all that's going on in America. So the reason why we're having you know same-sex marriage and all these other things and abortion and all this, he just pointed his finger at, at us like Trump points at the news media, and he goes, it's your fault. It's right. your fault. You didn't man up and, and do what you were supposed to do. And Archbishop Chaput uh, was saying, the key to evangelization, if you want the most effective way to evangelize, is to marry wisely in a very devoted marriage, have lots of kids, and that that will change the culture. It's a long-term goal. But he talked about uh, the importance of family. And yeah. when you got stirred up in this whole area, you, like I said, when Rick Santorin said, man up, it's your fault, you have a book, I think the, the preface of the, or the title is, is Man Up, and you talk about fatherhood. What, what's the name of that book? Yeah, it's Man Up, A Practical Guide to Being a Dad. Oh, so it's uh, practical. Yeah, very, very much so. Very okay, much well, so. you got a, you got three minutes to tell us everything we need to know. So it's it's <laughs> it's a very short book. It's it's very short chapters, three or four page chapters. It's got bullet points at the end, and and basically, uh, it was a calling for me to write the book. Okay, I was seeing uh, a lot of guys going to that man as you and other men's programs, and they, and they're all our age. You know, they're all you know, 50s and 60s, their kids are out of the house and so forth. And I was trying to, to reach out to younger guys. Amen. Uh, and I knew that that a young guy is typically not going to want to sit through 26 weeks of, of, a, of an in-depth study. He doesn't even want to go into a church basement, right? He, you know, or church church hall. So so I wrote the book uh, as, a, as a reach out to young guys. Uh, it's, it's written like guys talk, okay? I, I didn't pull any punches. Uh, and it was... It was an, an absolutely exhilarating experience writing and publishing the book. You were talking about spiritual things that took place. It happened all the way through, uh, you know, from the time that, that, that I felt called to write the book to, to putting together the, uh, the content. It took me eight weeks to write, to write the book. I mean, I literally, I was having words come to my head. I put together a, a table of contents. I started with the, with the uh, acknowledgments and the introduction, and I wrote it front to back, you know, two or three chapters a day, two or three chapters a day. Um, and it, it, it was just, it, it was an incredible experience. Well, we're talking with uh, Dennis Daniel. He's a good longtime friend of my sister, Tammy. He's head of adult, of, of, of men's ministries for the Diocese of Austin. Hey, let me, we're going to talk more about this book when we get back, but I want to tell you, ask you a question. So where can they get this book, Dennis? Okay. okay. <laughs> the best bet is to look me up on Facebook, Man Up the Book, on Facebook, Okay. Do they get Shoot, it directly yeah. from you then? Yeah, yeah. Send it direct. Uh, reach out directly to me, and I'll be happy to uh, to send them a copy. Now, are there copies? Okay. Well, we'll I want to talk about this when I get back, but I want to tell you some. I'm putting putting my my book up on the video screen for those who are watching on YouTube. Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtue. You yeah. got it, you guys. I'm gonna give a free book away, uh, or I'm gonna do something good for somebody. Whoever reads in the acknowledgments, something unusual in there that the editors didn't find. Uh, I, if you, can, you, can go on the, you can go on and watch a pre-screen of it on Amazon. Uh, you know, they, they let you kind of preview the book or whatever. But if you, if you can find uh, the unusual person that I acknowledged in my, in my acknowledgments, we will send you a Long Ride Home coffee cup and a, uh, 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 you know, uh, one, uh, another, another prize of your choice. Because it's so funny how... I can't say it now, but it's so funny how it got past the editors, uh, and it shouldn't have. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing for them that it did. This is Bear Wozniak. I'll be right back with a Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You can go to my website, uh, deepadventure.com, and you can order my books. Uh, my most recent one is Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. 
And uh, Dennis had been talking about how, how he started his book, Man Up, by writing an acknowledgment section. And the acknowledgments of Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, you could kind of read it, I think, online before you want, you know, if you want to buy a book, you can preview it. Um, and if you can find the quirky thing that I put in the acknowledgement, I will send you a long ride home coffee cup and an autographed version of, of Deep Adventure. Uh, but Dennis was saying he started out by doing an, uh, uh, the acknowledgements and then an outline. And your book is Man Up. And, and what, is the, what is the subtitle? A Practical Guide to Being a Dad. Okay, and one of the things you said, what your favorite chapter is what again? The uh, uh, Kids' roles? Yeah, so, yeah I've, got, I've got two chapters back-to-back. -back. One is parents' roles and one is kids' okay, roles. Okay, give us kids' roles and then parents' roles. Well, let, let's, let's flip it around. So okay. here's parents' roles. So rules are intended to keep children safe and allow them to grow. Children do not know what is safe and what isn't. A parent's job is to set the rules, and a parent's job is to enforce the rules consistently. Now, we're going to flip over and say this is the kid's side. Kids do not follow adult logic. A kid's job is to break the rules. They are programmed that, that way. That's how they learn. Your rules are there to protect them from their own bad decisions. Kids won't like the rules, but they will get over it. So, you know, it's very practical stuff, but it's, it's stuff that I thought that, you know, young guys that didn't have a good father figure at home may need to hear. You know what? And that's, that's our mission, right? In our, when, we, when we look at our mission of our ministry, and, I'm, and I know it's exactly yours too, is there, there, one of our primary outreaches is to new fathers. Yeah. That tends to be when people who have kind of drifted a little bit in college come back to the church because suddenly— they have an eternal being in their home that they created, and how are, and a, you know a, a, a being that's going to live forever, I should say. And how do they how do they raise that how do they raise that child? And so, it, it, it would speak directly to that young father right now. You know, Father Father Larry said something two weeks ago at our men's conference, and he said, "The dad is the very first face of God that a child will will ever know." Because the child, you know, a, a baby, an infant, sees mom as being a part of himself. It's just an extension. That's where he gets his nourishment. That's where life comes from. But dad is the very first other. And God is the first other. So the dad is the first other that a child ever knows. So, you know, one of the things that I mentioned to, to, to uh, one of our parish priests here in, in the Diocese of Austin, his, his, his parish, his holy family, I says, Father, how can you have a holy family if you don't have holy fathers? And we're not doing a lot to to improve the holiness of our of our young men and our dads, and so that's why I'm so involved in men's ministry. Okay, so let's talk about this. You you said earlier in our in our show that men's ministry start is eighty percent spiritual. How do you what do you say to a young father? What should be his daily spiritual regimen, his weekly regimen to develop that? Because if you're not a young father and you're not getting up earlier before your children wake up. And slaying a few dragons on your own, uh, your family's already in trouble. What would you say to that new father, younger You know, father? I'll tell you, Bear, one of the issues that you've got is guys are at all different places in their journey. So the answer to that question varies depending upon where the guy is. So if you have somebody that's very advanced in their spirituality, like yourself, or, or you know, then the answer is one thing. But on the flip side, the answer may be something totally, totally different. And, if you know, one of the things that that just say a prayer with your wife every day, you know, get up, say the Our Father, say the Hail Mary, say the Glory Be, you know, read a Bible verse, start small. You know, you don't you don't you don't you know, you don't tackle Mount Everest on the on the on the first day out. You know, you always start with a small hill. And so that's the thing. If you have somebody that that hasn't been alive at all in their spirituality, the first thing that they need to do is just start small. Just start saying a daily prayer. Make sure that you're saying grace before meals. You know, show the pattern there. And then as time goes on, you can add layers onto your spiritual path and, and add layers onto your spiritual journey. You know, one of the one of the, one of the books that I read years ago was Catholicism for Dummies. If you don't know your faith, get a book that's simple and just start learning about your faith. But, um, um, you know, I wouldn't want to dictate a spiritual regimen for somebody else. 
because everybody comes from the spirituality from a slightly different perspective. Well, that's the beauty of the Catholic Church. There's something for everybody. Yeah. Uh, but, exactly. you know, the thing is, is that I think the key thing is, is young men, especially, you know, when you're, you're in high school, you're college, whatever, you're, you're very active. And, and uh, it seems to be a lot of the guys hit the gym about the time they're in their mid 20s yeah. or late 20s. They join that membership because their bodies are going, what happened? You know? Right. And they have that, that, that weekly routine that they do to get themselves physically strong and, and, yeah. and cardio strong. And, uh, you know, it, the same thing has to be said. Leading your family is one thing, but in your own personal spiritual walk, um, I would really challenge you. I, I took out Christian Okoye, the Nigerian nightmare, you know, the KC yeah, Chiefs yeah. guy, surfing. Yeah. And he was in great shape. This was after he retired. And I said, what's the secret? He goes, I have an appointment every morning at 6 a.m. at the gym. And I think every man uh, needs to set a time and a place where he sets aside at least. I, I w people t ask me, what does it take to be a big wave rider? You know, a big wave is uh, at least 20 foot plus. My son Jeremiah surfed 80 foot plus waves. But if you're going to go out in 20 foot plus waves, I always tell them you need to surf. You need to be able to hold your breath for the time it takes for the sun to hit the ocean and set below it, two minutes and 20 seconds. You need to be able to dive down 20 feet, grab a boulder, and run underwater for 20 meters. You need to be able to paddle 20 miles without without uh, stopping. Uh, and if you can't do that, you shouldn't go out at 20-foot-plus waves. But as a young father, you're already out there, and you need to develop what I call the 20-20-20 rule of, of, of spirituality, which is spend an hour every day with the Lord. Maybe it's 20 minutes, three different times. Maybe you say a rosary on the way to mass. Right. Maybe you get up early and you read one chap, one, uh, one or two pages from the catechism, the liturgy of the hours. Um, but you may break that up into at, at your second coffee break. You go out for a walk and pray instead of sit with your friends and talk politics, but find a way young men, because two things you said really stand out. One is, uh, Servant leadership, it's spiritual warfare. You're the point of the spear. You're assigned to slay the dragons before your family even starts their day. So get up a little bit earlier if you can. And the other yeah. thing is leaders are readers, and you're leading your family somewhere. There's no question you're a leader. Where are you leading them? And know your faith. Yeah, th those kids are following you. They're watching you, you know. And, and you know, one of the, one of the other things that, that I, I think is important and it's something that that dawned on us in our in our in our diocese. Any time that you're in warfare, there's always two men in a foxhole. Okay, because one of those guys needs to rest every now and then, and somebody needs to be awake and paying attention. Right? Christ sent his disciples out in pairs. He did that for a reason, because he knew that that as you go through your spiritual journey. You know, there's going to be times when you're weak in your own faith and somebody there needs to somebody needs to hold you accountable. So the other thing is find a spiritual buddy, you know, find that foxhole mate for you. And, you know, that's Amen. where men's starts. Men's fellowship programs start with one or two guys getting together and talking over a coffee uh, over a cup of coffee. Every one of us had that one person that we look to in our faith journey that we could depend on. You had that person. I had that person. Okay. It may, it may so, it, yeah, it may be uh, two or three or four people. If there isn't a men's program in your your church, it's your fault. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> and start the way you started is to, you need two you other men. Yeah, and and what we're what we're trying to do is we're trying we're trying to make it easier for parishes to set up good programs because there are some best known methods that can be shared. But the fact of the matter is, two guys, two guys starting up and praying together. There's your start to your men's program. You know, and, and you can and those, do, those two guys go find two more apiece. Guess what? Now you got four. And those two guys go find two more apiece. Now you got eight. So over time, this thing went, yeah. So you don't know, think that you can't do it. The Holy Spirit's going to put wind in your sails. The other thing is we have this thing called Bear's Man Cave. You know about it. You know, uh, men go to our, our website, deepadventure.com. They join up there. We get They get access to the private Facebook group. And the idea is every two or three weeks we get together and we have these video Zoom, room, Zoom chat things, they call them. We have a cigar, a shot of whiskey, and we go through uh, the heroic virtues together. Mm -hmm. uh, well, um, that's what we're modeling for men. Some, some men aren't going to come to a church basement, but you can right. have men. You can invite men to come in the back in your, at your porch in the summertime on the deck and have a cigar and a shot of whiskey and focus on your walk with the Lord or have yeah. coffee together, have breakfast together. 
But it, it takes two or three two or three men. That's all it takes. And watch the Holy Spirit put right. wind in your sails. If they want to uh, uh, find your book, what's the best way for them to do it, Dennis? Look me up on Facebook. Man up the book on Facebook. I'm there, and uh, look me up there and uh, shoot me a shoot me a, a note on the on my Facebook page. And uh, and so we got to break away now. Uh, so I guess my last word should be: they, Should they be sick and bears, or should they be Viva Cristo Rey? <laughs> Viva Cristo Rey. Yeah, we're we're referring to uh, the fact that Dennis mistakenly went down the Texas Aggie Trail with his kids, Texas A&M, and I went to Baylor. But Viva Cristo Rey, when we ride into the Big Bend country, we found out the true meaning of that when we did season one of Long Ride Home. Everybody, okay. go to our website, deepadventure.com. Look up Dennis Daniel and his book on Facebook. We'll be right back next week with another Bear Wozniak adventure. Until then, you want to say Viva Cristo Rey with me, Dennis? Viva, Viva Cristo Rey! Hey! Amen. Gig'em! Sick'em bears!